VMware versus Virtual Box versus Hyper V versus Chemo Best Virtual Machine Battle. So over here we're gonna give a review for each and single virtual machine and see which is the best for you. But in order to define the best, we're going to have to define it based on the person's or a user's uh, preference and what they're comfortable with. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and start with VMware. Now this is known for its powerful performance, rock solid stability, and professional grade features. It's ideal for those working in enterprise environments, DevOps, or system administration. The interface is polished, it handles multiple heavy virtual machines with ease, and it offers features like snapshotting, shared folders, and hardware pass through that just work. However, VMware's premium tools like Workstation Pros and Fusion are paid though. There's a free player version. Uh, Fortunately, with Broadcom now owning VMware, some users are concerned about future pricing and support changes. Now again, this is best for professionals, enterprises, labs, and long-term virtual environments. So, it's not going to be ideal if you're looking for a free solution. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on to the virtual box. So, this is best for beginners and it is light use. So VirtualBox is completely free, open source, and closed platform, making it the go-to option for students, hobbyists, or anyone just starting out with virtual machines. It's very easy to set up and use, and it supports a wide range of guest operating systems. However, its performance lasts behind VMware in high load scenarios and 3D acceleration is quite limited. So, it also lacks some polish compared to paid alternatives but for light development or basic testing, it's more than enough. So, it's best for beginners, casual users, and free VM setups but not great for graphics, heavy workloads, or enterprise level use. So, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next virtual machine which is Hyper-V. So Hyper-V is Microsoft's built-in virtualization platform for Windows Pro and Enterprise Editions. It integrates deeply with Windows features like Windows Sandbox, WSL2, and Secure Boot. It's efficient and reliable if you're working within the Windows ecosystem, especially for testing Windows servers or desktops. But on the downside, it's not available on Windows Home and it's less friendly with Linux guest systems compared to other options so again this is best for windows power users and sysadmins and it teams so it's not recommended for mac os or linux users or those on windows home so so that's pretty much it in hyper v we're going to go ahead and move on to chemo the developer's power tool so, especially when paired with KVM on Linux, this is a powerhouse for developers who want low-level control or need to emulate different CPU architectures like ARM or RISCV. It's fully open source, extremely customizable, and works beautifully with Linux-centric workflows. However, it has a steep learning curve and isn't as beginner-friendly unless you pair it with a GUI like VLR Team Manager. It's not ideal for quick casual VMs, but shines in advanced or embedded development use cases. So, this is pretty much best for advanced Linux users, OS developers, and emulator projects, but too technical for most beginners or casual VM needs. So in summary, which should you use this year? So if you want something easy and free, go ahead and use Virtual Box which is this guy over here. This one's pretty good. And if you're on Windows Pro Enterprise and want tight system integration, then you can go ahead and use Hyper-V. But if you need raw power, enterprise tools, or run many VMs professionally, then VMware is definitely your option in that scenario. And finally, if you're a Linux dev, Tinker or building for other CPU architecture, Kimu with KVM is unmatched, which is this one, my bad. But, anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If it did help you with information, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And that's all. Thank you.